Cool. I am Nick Curley, president of the Highland Town Community Association, joined by uh, Vanessa Freund, vice president as co-host. I'm going to give you guys a quick overview of our agenda for tonight, and then we'll dive right in in the interest of efficiency. All right, so for starters, I'd like to provide a brief update and recap on the special meeting we had last Monday, February 8th, uh, for the HCA annual elections. Uh, the result of those elections uh, is that uh, Vanessa uh, Freund is now officially our vice president for the next two years, having run unopposed for re-election. Uh, the secretary position uh, on the executive board is uh, currently vacant and will remain uh, open until filled. So anyone who'd like to participate in these meetings and our uh, board of directors uh, in a different role, uh, I'd love to talk to you about the secretary position. If you know someone in the neighborhood that you think would be a good fit, please contact me uh, via the Highland Town Community Association website. Uh, my email address is there. Moving on, the um, in 2022, the president position, the treasurer position, and the sergeant at arms role uh, will be up for re-election. So, like, if you're not sure what you're going to do a year from now and want to get started early, think about that. All right, uh, moving on. Uh, Vanessa is going to give a couple of updates uh, regarding the uh, Cafe Lights uh, grants and some other things she wants to talk about. Uh, Mike Dorsey may give us some updates from the Finance Committee. And uh, I'll tell you that we are looking at winding down the Finance Committee after our upcoming meeting once we have uh, approved the annual report, which will be posted on the website. But I believe we have accomplished the things we set out to accomplish with respect to structuring uh, events, payments, and grants, and getting our financial reporting in order. All right, um, also uh, some other general comments that we'll talk about briefly. Uh, we are aware of the shootings that happened on February 10th and Brian is uh, sending out links to us for meetings tomorrow to follow up with uh, BPD and C. Cohen's office. And we've got three guests tonight, uh, Dwayne Johnson from the uh, state's attorney's office, Baltimore City State's attorney's office uh, should be in the meeting a bit later. Uh, Tacia Thompson of the Zero Waste Coalition is going to make a brief presentation about uh, the wheel abrader and how it pollutes the communities it's, uh, in its kind of catchment area. And finally, uh, Rashika Duan is a MICA uh, graduate student working on a capstone project, and she's going to present on the Conkling Street Plaza restoration plan. So that's our agenda for tonight. Uh, before we have uh, the guests speak, I'll open the floor to anyone that wants to raise any issues. Otherwise, we'll proceed. I expect we should wrap up the meeting about 8.15 tonight. All right, so following our election updates, I'm going to uh, turn over uh, the mic to Vanessa and ask her if she would like to talk about Cafe Light Grants and anything else from our board meeting that was just concluded. Vanessa, you want to take the stage? Sure, thank you. So Cafe Light um, applications have been coming in. The application is on the website. Um, we have received eight applications, four of them are for whole blocks and four of them are for individuals. We have one reimbursement request um, with the appropriate documentation. Um, so we're pretty excited. The applications are coming from different areas of Highland Town. We've seen some for Clinton Street, some for Eaton and some for Pratt. We also had a couple of other community organizations reach out to ask how we um, got the grant and just how we got things up and rolling. Um, so that's been pretty exciting to give them the information as well. And I let bg and &E know that they could see some applications coming in for um, cafe lighting from other community associations. Um, so we're off to a pretty good start with that. If you're interested in applying for the grant, please do so. It's on our website. Um, get that in. We do have a limited amount of funds, so just make sure you get your application in. Um, and the other thing uh, is that I scheduled um, dumpsters for the upcoming year in May. We will put the information on um, social media with the exact dates. They will be on Saturdays. So look for that information um, coming out shortly. And that's it, that's all I have. 
Awesome. Thanks so much, Vanessa. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, Michael Dorsey, is there anything you'd like to add as from the treasurer's chair? Uh, nothing uh, dramatic. We will have the full year finance report at the next meeting, which I'll review uh, with everyone, but it's pretty simple. Our main income sources this year have been BG&E, Franz Merrick, and uh, the Baltimore Community Foundation. Whereas Friends America and Baltimore Community Foundation were both devoted towards uh, Conking Street Garden and the progress there and really opening it up, um, which we'll be hoping in a non-COVID land uh, will be a very festive uh, location and that we can host a lot of good things and community gatherings there. Um, there's also up and coming uh, along that front, a NIFWF right. or National Wildlife Grant that um, the Audubon has acquired uh, with, with Southeast CDC. And so between the two, there'll be more room for funding plantings in the Cockney Street Garden uh, coming up. So that's the basics. Great, thanks, Mike. Yep. Before we move on, does anyone have any questions for Mike or Vanessa about anything they talked about or anything they didn't talk about? It's pretty broad, I know. All right, moving on. Let's take a look, see at our agenda. <clears throat> All right, um, so yeah, just to uh, finish the thought, the Finance Committee has done a lot of uh, great work and Brian and Vanessa uh, and Michael and I, uh, I believe have accomplished what we set out to with respect to tidying up uh, some of the documentation of our finances and meeting specific obligations as outlined in our bylaws. So I feel like after our finance committee this upcoming Thursday, we're gonna wind down the regular Thursday meetings that have been happening because I think we've checked those boxes and we will revive that committee at such a time as we have a need to. Um, but great job, everyone, and thanks for your support. I really feel like we've gotten some great work done. And again, I really appreciate the volunteer hours you've put into uh, making the HCA better. Um, all right, so moving on to some general comments. Uh, you may be aware that there were uh, several shootings on February 10th, uh, one on the 3400 block of Lombard, as I recall, and one about a block away. A gentleman was, I guess, in mid-morning shot and killed. And then later in the day, three individuals were non-critically shot from an individual driving a vehicle. And I think they walked into different hospitals or were driven. Um, anyway, that's not great. The police had cruisers and or officers on foot patrol within a block of those shootings. And uh, yeah, we're really upset about it. So there is going to be a call tomorrow afternoon that uh, some of us are gonna be on with uh, leadership from BPD and city council and we're gonna try and get some clarity about what the uh, broader strategy is to prevent a recurrence. Uh, daytime shootings, well, shootings in general are of course awful, daytime shootings even more so, and we'd like to get some uh, information about what's being done to make the neighborhood safer. So we don't have anything additional to share at this time, but I want you to know that we're doing our best to engage and uh, we will let you know what we find out. Uh, Brian, working together, can we get some updates out uh, via social media after that meeting, you think, just to continue the conversation with the broader group? Sure, yeah. And um, yeah, I, I'm not sure just what to expect at this point, but uh, you know, we've asked for and received a meeting with um, command at the Southeast District. Uh, they have, as Nick said, had some stepped up enforcement uh, on foot and in cars in the area, and it's proven to be insufficient. So I think it's fair for us to point out to them that, you know, just having officers on the corners is not going to be sufficient. So we're going to ask for some, we're going to ask for them to step into the these known drug corners. I mean, this what is, is driving all of this. We're going to ask that they find a way to step into these people and, um, you know, try to catch it before it happens instead of cleaning up afterwards, because I feel that's what they've been doing. So yeah, more to come. Thanks, Brian. appreciate it. All right. So if I can like, just like to talk to you guys for a minute and share a thought or two. So 
You may or may not be aware that Brian and Vanessa and I, among others, spend a lot of time every year going to like long, tedious meetings at City Hall and working on task forces and like nights uh, of Zoom meetings until we're bleeding from the eyes. I mean, not really, but it feels that way. Um, so anyway, like, but we are all putting in after hours time trying to engage with our elected leadership and support like actions and activities that make the neighborhood a better place. So to that end, I think sometimes we necessarily make some assumptions about um, what the priorities of the neighborhood are, like what's good for the neighborhood. And some of that's common sense stuff and we just kind of roll with the punches. But we had occasion recently in the meeting to recognize that there is like a meaningful difference between what we feel like is good for the neighborhood and what some of our elected officials feel is good for the neighborhood. So. I wanted to tell you a little bit about that and ask you for some help moving forward to try and uh, balance the scales, I guess, uh, or at least uh, get some information to work with because I love data. So the situation is that on the Conkling Street corridor and throughout Highland Town, um, you may be aware that there is like a lot of prostitution, a lot of street prostitution. And so there are ladies working the corners from Claremont to Pulaski Highway on South Conkling and North Conkling Street. And it's not like, it's not casual. Like there are ladies just working the corners, like it's their job. And like, it's been going on for decades. Um, and so in addition to like the sex work happening on the corners, there are uh, like the ancillary, uh, like drug related challenges and like sanitation related challenges, specifically like used needles left in alleys and human excrement and urine in alleys and the sides of people's houses and people having sex or performing sex acts in cars in front of our houses throughout the neighborhood. So like definitely less urgent and important than murder, but over the span of time, like all that happening in front of your house takes its toll and makes you feel like you don't live in a great place, right? So to that end, some of us have been working with um, Councilman Cohen to try and address the quality of life crimes that happen in the neighborhood because we want a coordinated strategy. We want city resources to be deployed. We want law enforcement to enforce the laws that are on the books. We want Johns to be criminalized and the sex workers to be helped out of the awful situation that they're in. And we recognize that that probably takes a carrot and stick approach that provides like common sense incentives to engage with uh, supportive services rather than be prosecuted uh, over the span of time with like cumulative arrests. So that's the position we've been defending. Like we've been saying, we want more foot patrol from police. We want cameras to look for Johns in the neighborhood. We want to discourage all of the related criminal behaviors that make the neighborhood less good. And the response we've been getting, interestingly, is really not focused on addressing the street level problems, like the uh, lack of toilets and like the the just the the presence of the obvious sex acts in cars in front of houses, like. There is no enforcement activity occurring presently. And the mindset from the city government standpoint is that quality of life crimes, generally speaking, aren't important because they've got big, bigger fish to fry. So as the president of the community association, when I go to a meeting talking and someone says to me, like, how are things in your neighborhood? What's going on with the prostitution issue? I feel like it's my job <laughs> to say to whoever's asking, we need help, we need resources. The ladies in front of our house need help. My neighbor who's cleaning up the poop in his alley needs help. Like the women who walk their dogs in the street or whatever and get propositioned by men in cars who see them as sport need help. Like the whole situation isn't great. And the response we've been getting has consistently been one of uh, kind of trying to address kind of the broader like human issue, the philosophical issues like so when we say we need help addressing these quality of life issues in Highland Town, the response we get is like, well, we wanna help all people. <laughs> it's like, well, yes, no, this is a specific group of people I'm asking for help with. And it's become kind of a circular logic debate. So um, to that end, what I'm interested in doing is putting a budget, like a button on the Highland Town Community Association website. And I think the button will be called like, let's be heard or something to that effect. And it's going to generate like a pre like drafted email blank that is addressed to Daniel McRae, the city councilman, for, uh, woman for the east side of Highland Town, Zeke Cohen, the city council person for the uh, west side of Highland Town, 
the mayor and the Highland Town Community Association inbox. And I guess my ask is like, when there's a shooting in the neighborhood or when there's something that frustrates you or there's something that's awesome and you wanna be heard, instead of posting something snarky to Facebook uh, or Twitter, I would invite you to go to the HCA website and tap out a long or short, ver short version of your complaint or concern so you can share it with the people who are elected to make the community better. And maybe in so doing, we can actually collect some data about where people stand on issues. Because if I'm alone in trying to keep prostitutes from pooping in the alleys in Highland Town, I'd like to know that because <laughs> there are other fights we can fight, right? Like. The reason I fight that fight is because people tell me they don't feel safe or they feel disgusted or they feel like the situation is unfair. So without beating a dead horse, like I want data and I want to have like, I want to have legs to stand on. If I'm going to argue with the city council about what's important in Highland Town, I want the people of Highland Town to tell me what's important to them and to tell the city council people and to tell the mayor. So anyway, maybe it'll go nowhere, but I've asked John to create the link on the website I'll confirm it is up and running at our next meeting. And in the interim, I would encourage you to share your feelings. Like, I recognize we'll get some stuff that's not actionable and not, like, we're not going to agree about everything. Like, but I'd like to engage in some back and forth with folks about their issues and understand, like, where everyone's coming from. I'd like to find out what the consensus is, if there is one to be found, so we can fight, like, a better version of the good fight moving forward. So... Ultimately, I want to hold our elected officials accountable, and ultimately, I want the energy I can put into this role to be as effective as possible. So um, anyway, lots to think about and unpack there, but uh, I feel like I said what needed to be said about that. Vanessa and Brian, I'm going to challenge you to tell me what I missed or didn't say that you think might be relevant or important to this. Any thoughts? I think you pretty much nailed it. I mean, it's really, it's a matter of you know, collecting data and, and having a portal for people to come, um, you know, we can, we can do this uh, Zoom thing now, or when we were doing um, meetings together, you know, people were able to put their hands up and do that kind of thing, but we're not necessarily documenting as well as we could be. Um, and this will actually create a public forum to, to do that in and collect some real information so that we actually have something that we can, you know, you know, copy and show to them, uh, you know, whether it's uh, contributed anonymously or whether it's uh, got names attached to it, we can address specific informations in the words of the people who've got the issues um, that concern them. So I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Thanks, I appreciate and that. I think it's more constructive than putting it on social media, um, definitely. So I, I think it's a, a really good idea. Thank you, I appreciate that. All right, so I don't wanna bore you guys and uh, beat a dead horse again. So please meditate on that and let's develop it over the course of the next couple of meetings. Like again, I just, I think accountability is important. I think most of the folks who are elected to do jobs in the city, like I think there's a tenuous, accountability mechanism at best. And like, I've kind of, I guess at the end of the day, think most city roles are about constituent services. And I think if we don't fight for service, then someone else will get what they fought for. And I just want us, again, I want us to have a seat at the table and, and I want to make sure we're like, we know what we're fighting for and why. Okay, moving on. Back to the agenda. Hey, totally changing gears. I want you guys to know that the zoning folks in the city have received documents from the Popeyes up on Pulaski Highway and Pulaski uh, Popeyes is going to change their zoning to install a drive-through. So if that chicken sandwich is as good as I've heard it is, we'll all be able to get one faster. Um, so with that, I'm gonna go and open up the floor. Just a quick reminder that, reminder that Dwayne Johnson, the community liaison from Baltimore City State's Attorney's Office, will be invited to speak if he's present, but not just yet. Same with Tasia Thompson with Zero Waste Coalition, and also Amanda Smith-Peters and Rashika Dewan will be our final guest speakers tonight, so they can hang out and just wait a few minutes. And we're going to open the floor to everyone else in the meeting. Uh, if anyone wants to use the chat to jump in, and uh, 
add anything, uh, we're all ears. Would anyone like to jump in and share any updates, ask any questions, contribute anything to the meeting? Now is the time, other than those invited guests I mentioned. Okay, I'll add something. <clears throat> Go Living for it. on Conklin Street, only south of Claremont, uh, the alley across the street from me is day and night full of people peeing. And there are also some street girls cruising in that block. So it isn't just from Claremont North, it's also down as far as Bank. Jack, are you talking about the alley next to the Mason Lodge? Yes. Even with the, well, during the day, today somebody drove up, parked their car, got out, went in the alley, urinated, came back out of the alley, and then went to the tax office across the street. <laughs> so it's not just right. street people. <laughs> but every night when, I, when I'm sitting on the edge of my bed, ready to go to bed, there's always somebody coming in and out of the alley. Hmm. Um, it's a very good stop point between home and the nearest bar. Great. All right. Good to know. Thank you. Uh, Ann says she's pretty sure there's a bathroom in the tax office. So. Huh. <laughs> well, that guy didn't use it. Yeah, I, I, I've used it. Uh, John does my taxes. You talking about the alley or the bathroom in the tax place? The alley, of course. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought. Excellent. Yeah, I guess as an aside, like during COVID, we haven't done we haven't done a cop walk in a year now. So we used to check in that alley and always look for like evidence of like camps being set up or like gross behaviors that we could like theoretically do something to reduce. So when we get back to doing cop walks, we'll take a look. Okay, I'm going to make one more call for any comments from the floor, and then we're going to ask our invited guests to start working their uh, oratory magic. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, Dwayne Johnson from the state's attorney's office, are you uh, present? Yes, I am. Thanks for joining us. Would you please introduce yourself and tell us a bit about what you do? Yes, sir, I will. Thanks for having me, Mr. Curley. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, first, let me just tell you a little bit about my past. I come to the state's attorney's office from the juvenile division. I spent about 20 years there. Uh, the past, the last five was managing the entire Baltimore City region. Uh, five years prior to then, I operated the Violence Prevention Initiative for the state, uh, for the city. Uh, so as, as you might hear, I have been tasked with many years of fully understanding uh, your thoughts and listening to you as in, from the email we shared to hearing the concerns you have tonight. So my role with the state's attorney's office as the community liaison is uh, one, starting with the uh, community court watch report that I'm able to provide you guys at any time, any time you want to discuss any matters that have occurred in your districts uh, for as far as updates. That is, once police have made arrests and the case has come to the state's attorney's office to know the status of it. Beyond that, which is critical to what the things you are talking about tonight, yourself and the other residents, I think that there's a great opportunity uh, for us to be heard. And I meant when I said it for us, because in this role, I see my role as being one directly linked to you guys from the state's attorney's office, but also my role is in partnership with the Baltimore City Police Department. So I want to be that source for you all that when Sergeant Jemmett, who's the supervisor of the neighborhood community officers, things are not working out, or we want things to work better. I want to be that voice that's another voice from you guys that's crying out to him that 
these type of patrol situations are needed. These particular areas you point out are hot spots. Because I'm all for accountability. I want to say that to you. I do believe in services for people that find themselves in very compromised lifestyle positions, prostitution, drug use. But on the other hand, we, we must have accountability in order to provide services. And the accountability should come from us all. And so I think uh, from what I'm hearing and from the email we shared last week, I want you to know that I took that all the way directly to the state's attorney herself. Uh, because we meet each Friday with all the liaisons. So after I spoke with you last week, I spoke to, when my time came to speak, I spoke to her about, this is one of the communities I heard from that uh, you list a number of items and issues there uh, that we need to really work together on in partnership with our partners at Baltimore City Police Department. So I, I hear you. And if you don't, if we don't speak up, you are so right about that, about politics. And I can tell you that from my own experiences that uh, we don't get heard. And sometimes we got to make noise. I do agree with your partner that said, we don't want to go to social media and embarrass people. We want, you know what I mean? And things of that nature. I think when we work collectively together, uh, otherwise, if you call me and you say, Dwayne, this is still going on. Is it something you could do or someone you could reach out to? I want to be able to reach out to these people and say that I did. And then if we need to come together in this meeting like you're gonna to have tomorrow afternoon with the police department, that we are all on one accord about what's going on in Highland Town and what we can do together collectively. Uh, because when you talk, like you talk, you mentioned Zeke Cohen, when you talk about services and trauma informed care, I, I'm very familiar with that from dealing with violence in Baltimore City. And that yes, there are some kids and neighborhoods and places that's been traumatized by these things. But as I said to Zeke Cohen himself, it's one thing to identify uh, trauma. It's one thing to say these people need services and this and that, but we also have to take the banner that we need to do more than provide services. Uh, because just sending somebody to a program does not change their lifestyle. Uh, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, it, it, it's the, in most cases, you got to get them to the program, first of all. You, you know, so I think that there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I, I don't come with no magic wand. Uh, I can tell you from serving the Violence Prevention Initiative that the approach by the government, as you said, was from the beginning was to uh, sort of lock them up and throw them away, throw away the key issue. Well, when you engage the human uh, people into doing this work, you then have to begin to build relationships with those people to either lock them up and throw away the key or, or, or turn their lifestyles around. And I think we did a lot more of the latter. And that was by being accountable, holding people accountable. And, you know, so I think, uh, <clears throat> I clearly, from what I'm hearing you say, uh, I'm sorry we didn't get to talk before this meeting, so I didn't have to talk too much to you. <laughs> Over, I don't want to take up your meeting time and do this, but I do want to say to you that, you know, I, I think that I'm going to take all that I'm hearing tonight and uh, and directly send an email already to uh, Captain Boyd and to Sergeant Jimmett uh, that we have engaged, that uh, I want you guys to look forward to each meeting asking us and asking me where are we at, Dwayne, and, if, and I'm going to be as forth, forthcoming as I can with you that we've discussed it, uh, we're working on it, or we promised that we we're going to do this, so we're probably, you know what I'm saying, I think that that is the beginning thing that I can do for you, and we'll do my very best for you. Uh, I'm going to put my email and phone number in the chat so that you can call me, Mr. Curley, anytime that you feel that you need to, and it's something, a message you want me to get to. Because Sergeant Jimmett is the supervisor, as I said, of the neighborhood community officers, Rivera and another other actual officers, but uh, Captain Boyd asked me to deal with him directly. So when I have concerns or problems that's going on in the communities in Southeast, that I go right to the horse's mouth. So I want to be able to do that. Uh, and say that to him, uh, 
as I said, and, and work in partnership with them that I'm not, we're not, we're working against one another. Or we don't, we don't solve anything this way. We have to work together. And as you said earlier, I, I firmly agree with that statement. We're not going to agree on every approach. Sometimes, sometimes we got to uh, sort of take our time to get to where we are trying to go, but we have to keep working and people deserve answers in their communities. As the gentleman just talked about it. each night when I get ready to go to bed, if I got to look up and see car lights flashing outside of my window, that is a public safety issue. That, that is an a, a uncomfortable situation to live in and we should do what we can and try to address it if it involves bringing other city workers in, in, uh, to look at that street or to look at that area to see is it something we can do to keep traffic down. Uh, so I think it's a host of things we can do. I just want to say that to you and that, and I'm offering my service to you uh, and not just limited to, I, I'm not a guy that just want to get on the phone each time you want me to say something tell you oh i can tell you what's on the report we locked up 12 people last year because that doesn't solve anything what's going on right now so i want to let you know that you know what i mean that yeah. i am fully i'm fully engaged in this work and I, i've been engaged in it so i'm not new to it uh, and i do clearly understand the juvenile perspective and how frustrating that can be when they are given opportunities and seemingly don't take advantage of them and they're right back out in these streets uh, doing things that we need answers for. So we can talk about those things. We can try to collaborate around it and work on it. So, you know, I'm just looking forward to it. Uh, and as I said, I'll put my information in the chat for you. Uh, I'm going to follow this uh, meeting up tonight with my, my constituents at the police department and uh, even let them know if they want me available. I can be available tomorrow when they want to speak with you guys too, so that we all know we're working in partnership together. All right? Outstanding. Thank you so much, Duane. I really appreciate it. Sure. Thank Dwayne. you, guys. And I look forward to working with you all. Likewise, Dwayne. I think Brian wants to jump in. Yes. Before you go, Dwayne, um, so we have this meeting is scheduled tomorrow evening with uh, Councilman Cohen and with, uh, is it Major Hopkins? I forget yes. what his rank is. Yes, Major Brian Hopkins. Major Hopkins. Uh, would you be interested in attending the meeting? Yes, I could. I could. Right. Well, it's not necessarily my place to invite you, but I'm inviting you anyway. Um, send you, I just sent you a private message on Zoom. Okay. Uh, if you want to send me your contact information, I'll flip the um, uh, invite, the Zoom con uh, link to you uh, shortly. Yes, okay? sir. And, I definitely uh, would do that. Yep, and it's four o'clock tomorrow evening. Four o'clock, I'll be available. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you, yes, Thank you Dwayne. Thank yes, you, Brian. I look, I look forward to working with you guys. Yep. Likewise. Well, I'm going to put Thanks my again. information in the chat box for you now, but I'll still be on the call for you if you need for something. Perfect. Thanks okay. again. Yep. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we move on to our next speaker, does anyone have any questions or comments for uh, Mr. Dwayne Johnson? Looks like no. All right. Again, thank you, Mr. Johnson. We look forward to working with you, and uh, maybe together we can uh, make some progress. Yes, sir. That'd be awesome. Yes, sir. Look forward. All right. So, moving on to our next speaker, do we have uh, Tasia Thompson in the audience and ready to speak? It's looking like no. All right, so our uh, final guest speaker is uh, Amanda Smith-Peters and Rishika Dewan uh, uh, to talk about the Conkling Street Plaza project. I think we might even get some uh, screen sharing action going on. So everyone brace yourselves. And I will turn it over to Amanda and Rishika. Thank you, ladies. Hi there, everybody. It's good to see you. So before I share my screen, which I think I have to, ask for that, right, Nick? Oh, share screen. Ta -da. Host disabled. Let's see if he'll, he'll give me access. Well, while we're figuring that out, I just wanted to remind everyone that the Highland Town First Friday Art Walks are back on um, in a limited capacity. I know a lot of people really enjoyed, aha, I can share my screen now. A lot of people enjoy the art walks. And so I just wanted to let you know that they are happening on first Fridays 
in the evening, five to nine is approximately the time, but everybody's kind of, we're keeping it really loose and flexible, safe as possible. So however you feel comfortable participating, scheduling a visit at a gallery, to getting carry out food that night, or just walking around the district with your masks on, supporting and waving to friends from afar, that's great too. So whatever way you wanna do it, we appreciate that. The next one's on Friday, March 5th. So uh, we'll have details always on Facebook and on our website, ihearthighlandtown.com. And I just wanted to make a quick plug for that, which I normally would have done during the other comments section. So, um, so I'm gonna shift gears and talk about something um, a little more specific. We, uh, Rashika and I are working together along with the HCA um, on a, a project for Conklin Plaza and it's gonna be a part of Rashika's um, graduate work. So I'm just gonna introduce the project a little bit and then I'm gonna pass things over um, uh, to Rashika to talk about the process. But basically, I don't think anyone on this uh, group is, uh, new to the idea that Conkling Plaza, which is at Conkling and Eastern Avenue, those four corner intersection near the library, that that area um, has had some positive things happen and some challenging things. And uh, we really would like to take some time in the next year and do a complete redesign of Conkling Plaza. I really think through what um, what the area should look like, how it will function. And, you know, given COVID, it's really important that we uh, have these public spaces. You know, Patterson Park is great, uh, but in our business district at Main Street, we need spaces where people can gather and, um, and, uh, and uh, gather safely. So, you know, it is one of the few public spaces we have in the commercial district and we wanna try to utilize it as best as possible. So we have a tentative timeline for what we have planned. The first phase, Rashika will talk about, um, we're calling it the preliminary phase, but it's pretty um, extensive uh, and she'll get into that. Then uh, we're also going to reconnect, or we're, we're reconnecting with the Neighborhood Design Center, which Rashika is also a volunteer with. And so we're going to use her work in a, in a continued research and design phase with Neighborhood Design Center in case we need some, um, some more, I would say, uh, foundational drawings, you know, uh, those sorts of things we might need from them. Uh, so that will happen for, the, um, once Rashika has done her component, that will happen for the remainder of the year and into early 2020. Uh, there'll be uh, some applications available uh, probably in the spring of 2022. I keep saying, I said 2020, I meant 2022. <laughs> and um, so we'll be able, it's a little too soon to have a plan and apply for funds. We need to really make the plan and it's gonna take about um, six months to a year to make that. And then when the next funding round comes about, we will apply for those, it's normally state funds to do some designs or do some renovations of the plaza and then hopefully we'll be able to implement the physical changes to the site in 2023. That sounds like a really long time um, from now, but um, it, it, it will move fast. I'm sure I'll see you all here. So um, just a quick reference before I pass it over um, is that as you can see, Conklin, I don't know if my screen is big enough. I didn't actually hit play on the slideshow I'm realizing. Um, I can do that. Uh, <laughs> I only present. Is that better? Yeah, okay. So as you can see now, this, for those of you who are familiar, we've been talking about Conkling Street a lot. So it's the intersection of Conkling and Eastern. You have the library um, in the south, north, southeast, southeast corner. And, um, you know, Spartans on the other corner, the block with Filippo's. And, you know, I know many of you know Rustin Shen's right there. And then the pawn shop and peak performance on the other corner. We will probably spend most of our time developing what we can do at the three corners that are not the library. I don't know how much we'll be able to actually do at the library corner, but we'll take it all in and make it all part of our planning process. 
Um, these are just some visuals of the corner. We did uh, take an opportunity uh, recently to remove the benches. They look great in this picture, these um, former round, uh, round seats, um, but they are not doing, they were not doing well. And so we took the opportunity to remove them and we've put some of the COVID safety seating in that could easily be removed in the future. So that's at two of the intersections along with some planters, just to give you a visual. And we have some other visuals of the intersection that we're looking at um, from the street and from the sidewalk. So I hope this all looks familiar to everyone. And I'm gonna ask Rashika to join in as soon as I get to her slide. Oh, and we know it's a bus route. You know, all these things you all know about what goes on at the intersection, it's quite busy. And so I'm gonna let Rashika talk about the timeline, but I'm gonna keep sharing my screen. <laughs> Um, hi, so I am Rishika. I am a graduate student. I'm currently studying at the Maryland Institute College of Art. Um, and as a part of my final project, I will be working on this plaza redesign with the Southeast CDC. Um, and this is kind of just a little bit of what our process is um, for my final project. Um, it's mostly research based right now. And then I synthesize the information and I come up with ideas and prototypes for um, you for feedback from all of you. And then I get I give it back to the Southeast CDC and then they go ahead from there as Amanda mentioned with their timeline. Um, and uh, Amanda, if you could change the slide. Yeah, um, so just um, to introduce myself and then now kind of the next step is gonna be of interviewing and surveys. Uh, mostly trying to find out why you visit the plaza, um, what your visions are for the plaza, and <clears throat> sorry, and what would you like to see changed in the plaza? And I think this will probably in the next week or so, you should hear from me or Amanda um, through the Southeast CDC. And yeah, and then the next slide. Um, yeah, One I moment, think just, please. oh, yeah. Sorry, just a uh, quick note that uh, we've agreed when Amanda and Shika are ready, we're going to use our social media channels uh, to distribute the survey that was just referenced, and then we will submit or work with uh, CDC to submit all that information. So stay tuned for that link coming from us. Yeah, and uh, Rashika and I are working, I mean, she's doing all the work, let me be honest, like it's all her. Um, <laughs> Uh, but she, we're going to be creating the survey that will probably be an electronic survey, and then that way it can go right out to um, Nick, and he can distribute it to everybody. We don't, we were just not quite ready to finalize it by tonight. Um, and Rashika is also interested in um, interview and interviewing people as part of the process. So you know, we we might go out to the site. Uh, as safe as we can be, we're going to have the survey available in Spanish and English as well. Um, so that we can actually get the reach out to people who are using the site. If you're not using the site, that's okay too. We still want to know what you think. So we just, this is kind of our plug to say, the survey is coming, please take it. And if you really have some like deep seated passions about your, about Conkling Plaza and how you think it's, you really, you need to say it. You don't want to just fill out a survey. You can reach out to Nick, but also most of you know me and so if you really are like have a burning desire to like be more a part of this process in some way you want to be on the design team because you just feel so passionately about reviewing this um there some, might be someone out there i don't know you can you can also email me um, as well so <laughs> we do have um the process is also being guided by our highland town design committee, which um, oversees the design process for the Main Street District. So we're sort of working with a lot of pieces between Rashika and what she has with her um, grad program uh, deliverables, as well as the NDC process, um, and as well as the Highland Town Urban Renewal Plan that our uh, design team make sure that we stay um, in tune with. And Brian Sweeney and other um, residents of uh, from the Highland Town area are on that design review team already. So just so you know, you do have representation there from the community association. Rashika, is there anything else you wanted to add before we- um, No, I think you covered- short? Yeah, I think you covered all of it. That's, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Rashika is just learning that I talk a lot and <laughs> <laughs> you all knew that anyway. So 
Um, yeah, I think that's about it. And I don't have a lot of other updates from the um, district right now, but please keep supporting your local businesses and let us know your thoughts when the survey comes out. Outstanding. Thank you, Rashika. Thanks, Amanda. And again, stay tuned to our social media channels for updates and actionable items related to that uh, project. Uh, I think it's safe to say that uh, we are going to be investing as a community organization in the uh, ultimate uh, construction and uh, like kind of restoration of that area. So uh, we're going to put our money where our mouth is. And I'd love to have uh, some folks step up and express interest when the time comes to uh, participating in that process. Uh, it could be a lot of fun and we're all going to have to live with whatever it is. So let's love it. Um, <clears throat> so that being said, we have reached the end of our formal agenda and we have spoken with all of the invited guests uh, who were uh, on the agenda. So it is 750 and we are running ahead of schedule. I'd like to once again open the floor and see if anyone present would like to share anything for the good of the order. Starting now, please drop a comment in the chat or unmute and dive right in. This is your chance to be heard. Or not. All right. In the absence of any interest in continuing the conversation, I propose that we adjourn this meeting. Does anyone second that motion? Brian Sweeney. Jack, have, thank you. I oh. have a quick comment. I lost connectivity for like 30 seconds, maybe, but I've lost everything that was in my chat. Um, so before we go, uh, Dwayne, did you send me or will you send me your um, contact information because I don't have it here and I don't, oh, there it is. Perfect. Got it. Fancy. Okay. Thank I'll you. Get that. Thank you, Dwayne. And thanks for being on top of that, Brian. Very yes, efficient. Sir. All right. Great. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, gang. So one more call. Anyone else want to add anything? All right. So some closing, closing thoughts for you. Um, we will keep you posted as like I've been kind of monitoring some chat in the chat in the background while uh, running this meeting and it looks like we're going to put some time and energy into fleshing out our um, comments button kind of our share your thoughts with the mayor and the city council uh, button on our website because uh, some folks have had some great uh, contributions they've made during this meeting so we're going to work on that in the background and we'll launch something in the uh, coming weeks when it's ready. And again, whether like you agree or disagree with everything I've said tonight, um, I'd love to know about it. And I think our city council people and mayor should too, because uh, hopefully that's how we kind of move forward together on things. Also, uh, just I'm going to make a predictable but necessary call for board member engagement. We've got some great board members to spend time and energy trying to make Highland Town better. And over the span of the years, we've done some great stuff. The reason we have a garden and a wine festival and BG&E light grants and a cop walk, those are all things that were important to individual people that expanded due to kind of collective engagement and uh, over time. So the way Highland Town gets better is when you guys uh, decide to pitch in and do some lifting and together we can lift a lot. So uh, we definitely need a secretary uh, we could always use more board members. And when the pandemic comes to an end, I swear to God, we're going to have some awesome events um, to celebrate kind of the return to normality and uh, all that jazz. So uh, think about how you could get involved if you want to get involved. There's so many different ways to do it, some of which we don't know about yet, but you can tell us what you're interested in and we could run with the ball from there. So Feel free to reach out to me offline uh, via the email address on our website, highlandtown21224 at gmail.com if you want to have a conversation about how that might uh, be a good fit for you. Otherwise, uh, stay tuned to our social media channels for updates, and we will see you all next month. Our next regular meeting. I think Anne has something. Anne had her hand up, Nick. Yep, too late. Just kidding. Um, our next regular meeting is uh, March 15th, the third Monday of the month. And with that, I will uh, close it out with Anne's question or comment. Anne, you're on. Um, I just wanted to add a couple things um, as ammunition when you go into your meeting on Monday. Um, I don't think there are any like 
needle exchange resources currently being offered. They used to be on Conkling or Baltimore and Conkling, like down by where there's a treatment center, but I don't think they're there anymore due to COVID. Um, and the other thing is, I know, I mean, yes, I'm into harm reduction, but as long as we have open air drug markets where there's shootings and there's tons and tons of heroin, we're gonna have sex workers because that's part of the cycle. And just being nice to sex workers and helping them, I mean, you know, there'll be more. It's anyway, just um, remember that there are no resources now and try. Yeah. I appreciate it. And I mean, just since you said it, and since we've got a little bit of time and anyone who wants to log off can, like my concern with the entire situation is simply that prohibition result, like illegal activities, illegal businesses are regulated by violence in the absence of legitimate mechanisms to like settle disputes and help like kind of grease the skids, right? So like when you have a business transaction that's challenged to like You've got partners who are involved in good faith who want to solve the problem. They've got attorneys. They've got like reputations to protect, et cetera, et cetera. In the drug business, you just murder people you disagree with. I mean, like it's not really that simple, but it is at times. Um, and the high-minded talk about making resources available to street prostitutes is excellent in a vacuum when you're dealing with a handful of people that are in front of you at the moment. But when you look at, like, take a step back and recognize that street prostitution on the Conkling Street corridor is a generational problem and is a byproduct of a, like certain broken parts of our society channeling people with very few options into like a longstanding marketplace where like sacrifices are made to like beat basic needs, like. If we had limited city services and resources, which we don't presently, you might help any given number of people that are currently in that situation, but you haven't disrupted the pipeline, right? So more people that are drug addicted and have other challenges are going to show up to replace the folks that you just helped find, you know, housing or drug treatment or protection, or whatever. And so to pretend to approach that huge, like intractable problem with the idea that you're gonna provide services without actually one, addressing the boots on the ground problems that people in the neighborhood are facing and two, acknowledging like the giganticness of the problem um, and developing like strategies to address it. Like none of those things are happening. We've just got folks saying like, oh, we wanna help those people, but we don't have any resources. So we're gonna talk about helping them instead. Like that doesn't stop people from pooping in the alley and it doesn't stop shootings. So like, I'm not naive enough to assume that we can arrest our way out of either problem. And I don't think we're gonna solve it in a day, but I feel like there is probably a blend of enforcement and diversion services for both of those problems. Like Baltimore has a whole lot of folks without access to, like Baltimore is a huge gray and black market economy, right? Um, and like getting folks out of that business is like is not easy, but it takes time and money and resources and none of those things are happening at the city government level. Instead, they're just kind of talking abstractly about helping people instead of arresting them. And I think it's a missing of the point. So Anne's points are valid and true. And again, huge problem, like someone way smarter than me probably has better ideas, but they're not coming to our meetings. So I feel like someone has to fight this fight and I guess it's me. And I guess it's Vanessa and Brian. So like, we'd love your help. We'd love your feedback. And if you think we're crazy for doing it, tell us what we should work on instead. And with that, I will end this meeting. I thank you all for attending. I appreciate your time and attention. And thanks for being part of making our neighborhood a better place to live. Until next time. Bye, everybody. Good night.